Wednesday. Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new writer to talk about their books and their work. This morning, we are pleased to welcome Tim Cummings. Tim uh, was born and raised in New York. Uh, we'll talk about that because we grew up next to each other, Tim, and now lives in Los Angeles. He holds an MFA in creative, creative writing from Antioch University, Los Angeles, a BFA from New York University, Tisch School of the Arts. Uh, recent publications include Britain, Scare Street, Lunch Ticket, Meow, Meow, Pow, Pow. If you wrote this, you wrote this, so I'd have to read this. From Whispers to Roars, Drunk Monkeys, Hair's Paw, and Critical Read Raft, for which he won the Origins Essay Contest and received a pushcart nomination for his essay, You Have Changed Me Forever. He runs several writing workshops per year, offers manuscript consulting, and individual writing coaching. He teaches writing for UCLA Extensions Writers Program, the Townies Inc. in Ojai, and others. Um, okay, we're going to let everybody read the rest, but we're here to talk today or this morning, Tim, about Alice the Cat. There she um, is. So your debut novel, Indeed. you have extensive writing creds, you do um, a lot of writing, you do a lot of teaching. So tell us a little bit about the inspiration for Alice the Cat and what pushed you and motivated you for this to be your first novel. I had been a professional actor since I was a child. And in my early 40s, um, I decided that I wanted to evolve as a storyteller. And um, I had always been a writer. I had always been a voracious reader. Concurrently to being an actor, I'd always been trying to get books published. I had a big agent in New York when I was in my 20s and uh, I'd written my first book and a lot of really interesting stuff was happening around that book. But in the midst of it, when it was on submission, um, the Twin Towers went down, 9-11 happened. And that kind of changed the trajectory of my life in a lot of ways, both positive and negative. So I came out to LA shortly after that. And um, yeah, I just started to feel the, the need, the itch, the burn to really go back and evolve as a storyteller be better in my writing. I heard great things about Antioch's program, Antioch, Los Angeles. And when I got into the program, I felt very safe, I felt very sequestered away. I really just needed to break some rules, really write the book I needed to write, um, that I needed to read. A lot of stuff in my mind and heart that wanted to come out on the page. And because I was surrounded by so many supportive mentors and other students, it felt like a cushion, a pillow. And I just went in and started writing this, this book, although I, I didn't expect it to be the thing that put me on the map in any way. Right? Oh, that's, that's so interesting that you felt free and comfortable enough to do that. But let's talk about the, the premise of the book and a yeah. little bit of the story so that people understand when you talk about it, the, the context of everything. Yeah. So um, the book starts out with this cat that's acting um, suicidal. And that's based on something that happened to me when I was a teenager. I lost my mom to cancer and we had this cat. Uh, I grew up with this cat and this cat loved my mother and loved me. I came from a big family. I'm the youngest of six, but the cat didn't, didn't really uh, respond very much to anybody else. She was quite regal. She was quite the cat. Um, and in the wake of my mom's death, she started to act very strangely. And that was one of the things that happened was she darted out into the street when cars were going by. And I had a really tough time dealing with this because it was like, the family pet was the only one really dealing with the feelings. Animals are very instinctual that way and they act on impulse. And I had terrible fights with my father about this because I wanted something done and nothing could be done. And then the cat disappeared. I never knew what happened. I don't know if she succeeded in getting one over. I don't know if she ran off into the woods and died. 
I don't know if you took her to the vet and had her put down, but when I was at Antioch, when I was in this headspace, the question popped into my mind one day, what happened to the cat? And I was like, oh, no, I can't, I can't. I am not going there. I cannot unearth this. But well, that, that, take that deep, right? Yeah, that night I went back to the hotel because I was on my residency and I wrote what became the first sentence of this book. And then after that, I've said this before, but it, it felt to me like Tessa, my protagonist, and all of the people she meets along the way as part of her journey were just waiting on the other side for a writer like me to sit down. And then they said, that's him, go, go, and kind of came in. And, you know, there's a Ouija board in this book, but it's an interesting analogy for how it is sometimes for a writer. You know, you're kind of sitting there with your hands on the board and something else is kind of moving through you. And, and it felt a lot like that with this book. Stuff kept happening, characters kept coming in, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. And it's basically a story of, of grief and the afterlife and finding your own belief system and bonding with the other misfits in your town and everyone being irrevocably changed by something which is the crux of a coming of age story, but in the end leading to a great place of hope and healing between her and her dad. Well, I, I think, you know, it, writing, and we touched on this before, writing for that age group or in, particularly that age group. I mean, it's, it's a book that um, I think anybody can get something out of. Yeah. And we've all had to deal with grief and maybe not processed it fully. Uh, or on different levels that we need to, but um, writing, touching on those topics for a young, for younger readers, mm -hmm. uh, that that's a responsibility because you know you deal, you do touch on suicide, you do touch on loss, um, and you know some occasionally emotionally unavailable adults in the a kid's life, uh, maybe at a time that they particularly need. So, and you yeah. do it in not a preachy way, not a not like a sermon of, or, or a how-to book. You do it in such a literary, sneaky way that you, you get all these things into your head in a way that you can process them. How, how long did it take you to write that? A year. It well, took you took year. your whole life to get to the point to write the book, right? <laughs> and then, a long time to get to that point. And then I wrote it in a year, I would say, while I was in school. And then in my final semester, I had finished and my mentor, the incredible Gail Brandeis, the author Gail Brandeis, she was my mentor for my final semester. So the book was done by then and she read the whole thing. And I remember her just responding very strongly to it and saying, I really love this book. It needs to be in, this, in the world. I would love it if you would let me help you get it to people, right? Publishers and agents and people who are in a position to help get it somewhere, which of course, as we know, it's the hardest thing, yeah, right? And and uh, like I said, because I didn't have any designs on it being the thing that put me on the map, I was like, yeah, send it out. No one's gonna want it. I wrote it for me. It's my crazy head. <laughs> Nobody's gonna care. And lo and behold, here we Surprise. are. You know, and it, I think, yeah, I was gonna say, I think there's something to just writing your truth and not writing to the market going to say that you know everybody says write what you know blah 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 uh but i i get the sense in this book that you're writing what you feel felt yeah um and that it's such an original concept i mean if you sat down and pitched this book and and said you know it's about uh a teenage girl whose cat wants to commit suicide uh and who's dealing with loss and you know an unavailable father and you know it's, it gets in with misfits uh, or a unique group of kids who help her process what's going on and whatever. I mean, that, that is original, you know, that is an original thought that you don't say, you say, well, that's like something. It's not like anything that I yeah. can, and I read a lot. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I think it was brave of you to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and creative. I mean, what was the hardest part for you of writing this book? 
I think what you're talking about was being true to my vision, letting this story come in, not, not catering to the discerning voices. Um, and really allowing a lot of, it's a very emotional book. She has anger issues. There's a very angry ghost in it. There's a lot of feelings that get expressed. It's a very embodied book. It's very, very physical. Um, and I think just um, allowing the, the flow of it all, not judging it as it was happening, letting it Our be, thing. yeah, letting it be what it needed to be original, but also an homage to so many things that helped me. So Tess, as original as she is, is also a tapestry of like Meg Murray from A Wrinkle in Time and Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird and Cassie from Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And of course, Fern from Charlotte's Web and Lyra from the His Dark Materials trilogy and this character named Malu from The First Rule of Punk by Cecilia Perez. A lot of these incredibly strong, interesting female tween protagonists came in and I just moved the slides around to create something original and interesting, but also familiar, because I think that's what people like. Something new, but that has echoes of something that they know that they attach to emotionally anyway. Yeah, you know, I always think, I also, also think, and we were talking about this a little bit before, that age group, yeah, uh, yeah. it's particularly interesting, uh, the coming of age, um, and, you know, I have personal experience with um, uh, young women of that age, who can either be four when you talk to them, or 12, or 13, or 35, or 85. Yeah. Yeah. It can either be an oracle. Uh, some of them, I mean, the things that come out of their mouths, they're, yeah. inside, they're open. Yeah. Uh, they're just uh, on the verge of uh, changing their realities in some cases. Yeah. So the, the possibilities for writing in that age group are amazing. And, and now, are you going to stay writing in this um, genre or? I, 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 yeah, I have two other books that are, they, they step up, each one steps up a little bit. This one's upper middle grade. The next one is lower YA. The one after that is more YA. So they're kind of stepping up, I would say. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I love writing for this age group because as a writer, it's so rife with possibilities. I mean, the the hormonal energy and the emotional landscape of somebody that age is such a great analogy for life. I mean, how how alien you feel in your body as it goes through changes is so great for a writer to play with because it 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 grows limbs like an octopus and it takes on all these different meanings. And if you write succinctly and properly in this genre, you have to walk down the edge of a razor between writing for that intended age group, but also for the many, many people, middle-aged people who love YA and middle grade. And I think the reason that so many adults read YA and middle grade is because they have trauma left over from that time in their lives and they need to re-experience that age in order to heal or to evolve. And so they go into these books and they feel all those feelings again and it's like it all gets resurrected so they can come face to face with it and tackle it, have a conversation with it. You know, I, I love the notion of, you know, getting to that point in your life when you feel you're at your most wise and going back to talk to that part of yourself when you were very young, who was the most lost and saying, listen, it's going to be okay. Chill out. Hang in there. <laughs> yeah, hang in there. You know, there's this beautiful scene. I think it's the movie. Yes, it's the movie Hillary and Jackie, the movie about the Dupre sisters. I love that movie so much, where the character that um, Emily Watson plays has that experience. She goes through such a harrowing life as this musician and dies from, I think she has MS, right? She has an, yeah, she has an experience where she sees her younger self on the beach and 
and uh, they have a little conversation. And I think that's really magical because I think that's actually what's happening all the time. We've created time as a construct to get us through, but I think we're dipping in and out of timelines like crazy. I think that line alone should entice anybody to buy your book. Oh. Uh, and I think, you know, whether you're a reader looking for a, a little journey and, and to be entertained or a writer looking for a way to, um, or an example of writing emotional literature yeah. uh, in an authentic and genuine way, I think they would all, everybody would be interested in um, and I wish you a lot of luck with the book. Thank you so much. Honestly, it's been great to sit here and talk to you about it. You know, the book is very interesting in that it allows for great conversations with people. It's a community builder, and that's what it's about. It's about having a conversation. Otherwise, why are we writing? Yeah, I think that's a great question to end on. Yeah. Make everybody think about that before you sit at your computer and start writing today is why are you writing? which yes. is a great question to ask yourself um, as you go through the process. So I want to thank you for being with us this morning, Tim. Uh, again, thank wish you God. the best of luck. Um, hopefully we'll come back and have you um, back again. Would love that. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay. And so th thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this morning's conversation with Tim Cummings. You can share this interview on Facebook, or if you're looking to find this on YouTube, you can find us on SDWA writers online and find this interview with Tim Cummings, as well as hundreds of other um, videos like this. So until next week, please everybody stay safe and keep reading.